us for uh, <laughs> dealing with uh, things here. We're trying to make things better for you. We're trying to make everything uh, do well. Did you push the play? Yes. Okay. Uh, so we're trying to make everything better for you. So we're working on equipment and different things. So uh, excuse our uh, our busyness when we first come on because uh, I'm trying my best to make sure we can get a, a quality program out to you. Uh, anyhow, we are excited. Thanks. Thank you again for for uh, joining us and letting us uh, come into your homes, into your, uh, into your life at this period of time, whether you're on your break time or whether you're on, uh, just uh, on your phone or your, your computer at home or wherever you are. Uh, but we are glad if you're on YouTube, if you're watch us, watching us on YouTube, we thank you for uh, letting us do that. Thank you for subscribing. If you're not subscribed yet, uh, click subscribe and uh, just uh, be a part of us, and it'll notify you and let you know uh, that we're there. So uh, today we're going to talk about uh, uh, our gathering together unto the Lord. We're going to start with uh, 2 Thessalonians 2, uh, verses 1 and 2, and then we're going to go uh, to the book of Ephesians. I hope you got your Bibles and maybe your notebooks or whatever, and uh, you can make a note or you can watch it later. If you're not where you have those things, you can watch it again later. Uh, and make notes, but because this is a topic, Cheryl, that's so important, because in this time whenever, and we're going to pray in just a moment before we start, but in this time whenever so there's so many opportunities to be divided, there's so many opportunities for us to be, uh, to find fault with one another, uh, there's still a, a, a purpose and a plan for the body of Christ. There's still a purpose and a plan uh, for creation. We have to go all the way back, and I have to, to, to assume, you know, sometimes as Christians we assume, well, uh, it's, it's just for us, and we assume there, there's an elitism because we're born again, but do you know uh, being born again is open and available to every man, woman, boy, and girl on the planet, and that God can bring us all together in one mind, one purpose, and if we will just humble ourselves, uh, then we can hear the voice of God. And that's what, I, that's what we need to do today, Cheryl, is just humble ourselves and, and just uh, as we open up and say, okay, God, we, we want your will, your purpose. And there's a drawing, there's a gathering together uh, unto the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, unto the God of the universe. And we just thank God for that. We ask you now uh, to study with us and be, be in prayer with us because I believe God's going to speak uh, some things to every one of us today. Uh, Cheryl, would you would you pray for us as we get ready to go into this uh, into this uh, lesson today? And let's just ask God to touch the, the people and people's hearts. And just how do you feel led to pray? Father, we thank you for today, for the beautiful fall day you've given to us, and we just thank you for the sense of your presence and that your presence is always with us. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, our great and wonderful teacher, and we submit ourselves unto you today to speak forth anointed spirit and life words. Yes. And we also ask, Father, that not only will our words flow according to your will and purpose that you want to accomplish today, but that our ears and the ears of those who are listening at any point in time will be opened by the power of the Holy Spirit so we can hear what the Spirit is saying unto us. And it won't just be words without meaning and without effect in our life. You said that your word works effectually in us. That is to produce some sort of result in and through our lives. And so, Father, we bless your people today. We pray for anyone watching who does not know you, the true God, the living God, and um, who has not committed their lives to Jesus Christ as the Lord of their life, that you would deal with their hearts today because um, there is no greater life you do bring us life and peace and health, prosperity, all of these things come through the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has paid for us to have. So we thank you now, Father, that you speak to each one of us so that we can um, move up higher, be connected yes, to the head and the body connected yes, together to thank do the you, work Father. of God in the earth. 
and that love and peace would rule in our hearts and rule in our relationships with each other. Now we just commit all of this into your um, very capable hands and expect your work to be done in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. 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 Well, as I said, we're going to start reading uh, uh, some scripture in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and, and uh, we're going to read verses 1 and 2. It says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. Now, I, if we go back to uh, John the 17th chapter, we, we see Jesus praying, uh, Father, make them one. So uh, whenever whenever we're gathering together, see, a lot of times we talk about, well, we're, we have a, a personal uh, it's a personal salvation. I believe in a personal salvation. Thank God that whenever it seemed in my life that that uh, nobody else could walk with me, Jesus, I knew Jesus was walking with me. But there's also uh, the power of agreement when we come together. Uh, and and he says, I beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I, I promise you the Lord Jesus Christ has come. He came uh, into the earth. He came and he died and he was buried. He rose again uh, from the dead. And uh, he, he came. Uh, and now, what? When since the day of Pentecost, there's been, or before the day of Pentecost, actually, whenever uh, he instructed the body of Christ, he instructed the apostles to go uh, to, the, uh, to Jerusalem and wait there, go to the upper room and wait there until they be endued with power. Our gathering together unto Him brings us into a higher level uh, of power and relationship, not only with one another, amen, and not only with God, but with, with one another. So here, uh, we are the body of Christ today, and there's something happening. We just got through uh, last week uh, joining with uh, one of our dear friends in uh, Hiram, Georgia, uh, that uh, their 10th anniversary, and and. Uh, the gathering, the numbers of the gathering was rather small, but the word that came forth and the uh, power that we experienced there when we came together was awesome. It was just uh, God speaking to us, God in, uh, strengthening us and building us up. So there's a gathering together unto Him. Many times we gather in the name of a church, we gather in the name of a preacher, we gather in the name of a, of a movement, uh, but... But our gathering together is unto Him. Verse 2 says uh, that we be not soon shaken. And watch the progression here. Watch, watch the, not, I said progression, I mean the partnership. Uh, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as the day of the Lord, uh, the day of Christ is at hand. So evidently there were people writing letters or whatever, but he said, uh, he said, first of all, be not soon shaken in your mind. Uh, see, there is the uh, place where the enemy always attacks, where, where the enemy always tries to come at us, uh, is in our mind and tries to come at our uh, thinking one day this week, uh, or last week actually now. Uh, I was just getting, actually getting ready for service uh, and was getting dressed, sitting on my bed, and all of a sudden, just through my mind, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't out of being uh, depressed or anything like that. Just all of a sudden, through my mind, come, came the thought, "Why don't you just quit?" Meaning, I knew it was meaning the ministry, and, and you know, I just I automatically, really, as soon as I heard it, I laughed and I just stood up and said, "No, I'm not quitting." See, and there in your mind is where the enemy tries to come and plant thoughts, plant things uh, that, that will grow and that will cause us to have problems uh, as far as our walk with God and our progression. Uh, or, or be troubled, neither by, now watch this, neither by spirit nor by word. See, the, there's something that happens when we entertain uh, wrong words. I'm going to go to the words first because uh, a lot of times words is what allows wrong, the wrong spirit to be working in us. See, if we're troubled in our spirit, that's because there's a spiritual attack somehow coming at us. Uh, but now he said, don't be troubled by spirit nor by word. 
and see whenever the, the, the words that's coming at us begin to affect our spirit, uh, can I tell you that gives the, the enemy uh, a, a playground or a, a place to uh, attack from. But I want you to know today that God uh, will put a shield about us and has put a shield about us uh, and about our word. First of all, uh, he says to us, uh, that ye be not soon shaken by mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as the day of the Lord is at hand. And you know, a lot of times people, it's not just words that people speak either. He said, by, by letter as from us. A lot of times uh, people pick up and they read the wrong stuff. They read stuff that feeds into their uh into their psyche, into their minds, and they begin. It begins to trouble them, and they begin to walk. Instead of walking in the peace of God, they walk in uh, trouble, and, and they're upset. But can I tell you that those religious spirits, and I, a lot of times the things that they read, uh, people are confused because they read all kinds of different doctrines, all kinds of things, all kinds of uh, you know. The uh, it's so interesting as that there are some people who get edified by by teaching and other people that get edified by trying to tear down what somebody else taught. Uh, so we're, we're in a time whenever we need to, to speak good sound doctrine, uh, but we need to stay with the Word of God and be not shaken in our mind and, and in our uh, spirit. We don't, don't need to be troubled uh, by the words that come at us. Uh, you know, if you're sitting and watching the media all the time or if you're reading all kinds of psychology books let me tell you that's not going to make you strong psychology just what what uh you can feed your mind with is not going to make you strong but what will make you strong is that strong relationship be not be not soon shaken amen that's what we're here to declare uh today and, and to uh, say unto you uh, that god is giving you strength uh, to go through the things you you go through. Now, you know, sometimes Christians major in going through stuff. Uh, but you know what? Uh, I believe it's a, a day whenever God wants us not to keep going through stuff, but to stand up in victory and declare that we are overcomers. We are the, the victors of the Lord and that God has brought us uh, for now, I, I, I made up my mind. I'm not going to be troubled. When that, when that thought came through my mind, I immediately stood up and said, "No." I didn't. I didn't even have to say anything else. I just said, "No." I just answered that thought that came through my mind because that's the place where the enemy tries to work. See, and psychology many times feeds that uh, thought process. Uh, and, 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 um, and empowers and enables us to feel like, well, woe is me. How pitiful am I? No, you're not pitiful, and we're going to show you when we go uh, on into Ephesians in a minute. But, uh, Cheryl, you got anything you want to share right there? Because this is a, uh, I noticed you underlined a couple things I didn't, and maybe you can share with us there. Well, actually, I want to say something um, that was kind of funny. This morning I was researching something, nothing to do scripturally or spiritually really, but uh, health-wise. And one thing I've learned, because I've, I've read and studied a lot on nutrition and supplements and health things and all of that, is that if you rely on things like Google, even books, um, you can look up anything on Google and you'll have this group of people that's just so adamant that this is the way it is. And you can take that same subject exactly the same and look down a little bit further and this opposite group will take just the opposite of what you just read that yeah. this group is so convinced about. And really, um, Roger mentioned about psychology and at one time in my life I read a lot of books that way trying to fix myself. This was many, many years ago before I was truly born again and understood things about how the Word of God fixes us. But um, I was thinking about all this this morning um, when I was looking up some things and saw all these contrary opinions of people that presumably have scientific evidence 
to back up their ideas. But psychology, for one thing, is always self-focused. And this verse of scripture came to me first thing this morning, and I just thought, why am I thinking about this scripture? And it was um, the scripture in uh, somewhere, I looked it up, I can't remember right now where, but we're familiar with it, I think it's in Romans. It talks about mortifying the deeds of the flesh. You see, psychology focuses everything on the soul and the body. Mm -hmm. It focuses nothing on the spirit, nothing. Yeah. Now, sometimes they'll call it spirit or talk about being a spiritual person, but that spiritual person in psychology always ends up being yourself. Yeah. It's really talking about making yourself God. Um, and the Bible talks about that. But I got to thinking about this, and I thought, God, you know, I've read for years things on nutrition, and many things were very helpful to me. It changed my life, and I know that there are certain things that I have to have in the form of supplements to keep myself um, stable and um, all of you that. Too. It's just part of life because... You know, the world we live in today, most of the food is really not very nutritious because it's force grown and it doesn't have enough time in good soil to pull up the nutrients from the soil, which is what our body needs. Yeah. But anyhow, neither here nor there. But as I sat there thinking about all this, I thought, you know what? Everything, every single answer we need is in the Bible. Amen. His word is a light. Unto our, a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. So the, the lamp shines right here so we can take our steps. But then the light for the pathway is enough for us to keep walking. So we have a lamp and a light together guiding us. And, you know, actually the Bible's full of things on nutrition. So I just thought to myself, why do I keep doing this? Why do I keep thinking I'm going to find something else? And I just sort of made an agreement with the Lord at that point that I'm going to stop this. I am, as soon as I have the, some other things finished, I'm going to start a book on health. And um, it is going to be taken completely from the scripture and just some things that I've learned myself that Roger and I have learned and have put into practice. And, um, but the point that I'm saying about all this is we are so easily led astray yeah. by words, yeah. by those fiery darts. Of, and sometimes, you know, the scripture says Satan transforms himself into an angel of light. And sometimes it sounds so right, so perfect, so lovely, but it's not. Over Amen. both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, it talks about there's a way that seems right, but the end is destruction. But there is a way that leads to life. So let's get on the path that leads to life. What we're talking about today is a path to lead us into life. All right. Amen. I think that's my little bit. <laughs> Amen. And, and it's so important that we understand that the attack, of the, that the attack of the enemy, whenever the attack through words uh, try to come at us, it, it comes, uh, many times it comes individually. But then there's oftentimes it'll come at us uh, as the body of Christ, as a, a specific church group. Or a, but right now the attack, I believe, is on the body of Christ all over the world. Uh, especially in America right now, there's words that are really, really trying to go, uh, go out and to cause us to be troubled. See, and, and, and he said specifically, Paul says specifically, let not uh, need, uh, uh, be not soon shaken in mind. And see, whenever we realize that the real target is our spirit, if the enemy can ever get to our spirit and tear down our spirit, uh, then, you know, we're, we're, we're lost. But can I tell you uh, that God puts a hedge about us, and if, as long as we reinforce that hedge with the, the Word of God, with the, uh, 
Uh, but we got to make up our mind. I'm not going to be moved by all these thoughts the enemy tries to put in my mind, whether they come like it did me sitting on the edge of the bed without anything else uh, happening or uh, by words of p other people. You know, many times other people will come, even well-meaning people sometimes will speak negative things to you uh, that will cause you to second-guess yourself, to doubt yourself. Uh, so uh, we're here today because we're here to reinforce who you are in God, and we're here to reinforce uh, that you are the, the elect of God, you are the children of God, and we're going to find that in Ephesians, the first chapter. Uh, let's go to the Ephesians, the first chapter. If you're through there. I reckon. <laughs> uh, no, go ahead. If you've got something else to share right there before we go on to Ephesians. Well, um, I actually don't know why I got off on that little tangent, but evidently somebody must have needed to hear it. But um, I did want to point out the word coming. You know, there's a, so many different ways to look at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, but this word coming is from a present participle, and most of us don't know a lot about grammar. If we ever did, it's, you know, we don't focus on grammar as a general rule unless you're an English teacher. But I was curious about it, and I looked it up actually online. To I like to look at various di dictionaries um, because, you know, it's been years since I studied grammar, but it was interesting to me because it said that a present participle is a present action and that the words usually end in ing. So I took another look at this and uh, coming means a being near. This word mm -hmm. coming right here means a being near. Amen. So what I wanted to point out here is that the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is continual. It's a present thing. It's a, a present tense thing that's happening. So if we find that our mind is shaken or we're getting a little uptight about something or troubled or worried or fearful, look, look back to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and remember that He is near right now. Amen. We have every avenue to reach out to Him and allow Him and request of Him to help us right now in this moment when we're under attack or when we're, um, you know, how your mind thinks, is any of this real or will this ever go away or will my life ever change? Everybody goes through all those things. But we can stop and say, come here right now, Lord Jesus, I need your help. And he will. He will do that. Amen. And then she just inspired something else in me too when she's talking about uh, the Lord being near. And uh, actually, if you read this, the, the sentence, it says, By the coming of the Lord and by our gathering together. Uh, there's a key word there, together. Mm -hmm. And uh, let, me, let me say this. The, uh, Christ is the, means the anointed one. Uh, Jesus was and is the anointed one, but we are the body of Christ. Right. And whenever that body of Christ comes together, uh, then Christ comes together. Whenever the body is gathered, whenever, you, you know, uh, there there's a difference whenever we come together uh, as the body of Christ and we come together in faith and there's agreement amongst us. Uh, then, can I tell you, the power of God begins to move and there's... Uh, there's a mightier force that begins to uh, to uh, be activated in the earth. And I believe that that force uh, has not yet reached its fullest potential. But as we gather together under the Lord Jesus Christ, not under our uh, all the things we've named uh, before, but under Him, very, very good, Cheryl, about the, the, that coming and that, that Him being near His presence. It reminds me of what... Uh, John the Baptist said whenever Jesus came to, the, to his baptism, and he said, uh, Behold, the kingdom of heaven's at hand. In other words, it's near. It's right here. And see, that's the thing. That's the, uh, what God wants us to know now. The kingdom of, uh, of heaven or the kingdom of God is, is near right here. And that's going to be important as we go into Ephesians 1. I just want to say one thing about this too. 
Um, I did look up gathering together, and the Greek word is, this phrase is one Greek word, or, yeah, one Greek word. Yeah. Gathering together is one Greek word. And it means a complete collection. And I thought this was oh, interesting. Hallelujah. Yeah, a complete collection. And it stems from a word, the root words, are to collect upon the same place. Mm. So the same place is unto him. And it's a complete collection. That That is extremely Amen. exciting and encouraging because when you get this collection together, I believe it's going to be a wholeness. A, like I taught in class last night, the word body means a sound whole. When we're collected together in this one thing unto uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, in this one place called the Lord Jesus Christ, the body of Christ, the head and body connected, we're going to be that sound hold, whole, W-H-O-L-E body in the earth today. And I believe that's what all this stuff is all about that we've been facing all of our life, but especially over these last what, six or eight months or so, this has put a pressure, in a sense, or a stress, you might say, on the church. It really is a time of separating the wheats and the tares. It's really a time of people coming to say, what do I really believe? And how real is my God to me? Uh, this is a good thing. Amen. You know, uh, when you were talking about the, the, the whole and the complete there, the scripture came to me where it says that we are complete in Him. Yes. And the word we there, it's not just I'm co complete all by myself, but we as the body of Christ. Right. That's why there has to be a coming together unto Him. Whenever we see that, whenever we recognize, uh, you know, uh, and another scripture even refers back, I think it's in the book of Hebrews, uh, where it's talking about those even in the Old Testament that were uh, were believers uh, could not be complete without us. So whenever we look at God's plan, God's plan is a completion of what He has begun, but He uses that completion uh, in His body, in His people, as we gather uh, together unto Him. So we are complete in Him. And, uh, you know, you, you know... Uh, Separate your no, don't do this. This is just a, an example. Uh, but if you separate yourself from from the body of Christ, and and not only you have watched people that you know, if they separate themselves from the body of Christ, soon they begin to rec begin to uh, experience weaknesses and, and attacks that they don't normally experience whenever they're together, when they're praying together. Uh, you know, there used to be a, a saying, and I guess still is that. The families that pray together stay together. And the churches that pray together stay. You know, there's something about coming together uh, that builds our faith, that builds us up uh, in the Lord. And we, as the body of Christ, are uh, strengthened by that coming together. Uh, now, it's more than just a coming into the same place. There's, there's, you know, a uh, hundred thousand people come into big stadiums uh, for. Uh, a football game. Well, even in that, there's there's energy and there's a commonness. They come together in a commonness. But our commonness, uh, what you and I have in common, is our relationship with God. What Cheryl and I and you and I have have in common is our relationship with God. Even right now, I, I sense uh, as people get on here, as you say Amen, and uh, uh, thank you, uh, Sarah, for your Amen, and I, uh, those that are. Uh, coming together even to hear the word right here. There's something being strengthened uh, in me and in you as we come together here. Uh, why? Because God's brought us together by the Spirit of the living God. Amen? I want to say one thing about um, not being included in the gathering or coming together with other believers. Um, I had a period of time in my life where I just left the church for various reasons. I didn't see any point in it and all kinds of things. But I didn't realize it until after God gave me a visitation and I was truly born again and all. But it was really a long 
time before I realized how much my life was so messed up during that time period. And, I mean, it's part of growth, all of this is part of growth, yeah. but it's much wiser to listen to people who've already suffered things than to have to figure it out for yourself by being ignorant and, well, just plain stupid, really, and not taking sound wisdom from those that have wisdom. But um, when you do separate from the church, it does open your mind to all kinds of thoughts. Everything around us is words. There's words in the air that you get a radio or a TV and those words come in. Well, those words are still circulating in the air. And we are spirit beings, so our spirit is very sensitive to that. But also, uh, it's very, um, you know, we know from the scripture the things that it talks about the devil and how he comes and all of that kind of stuff. But something happens when we become disillusioned with the church. Yeah. And that's most of the reason that people leave. They feel unhappy, dissatisfied, and so forth and so on. But it puts our soul in a very dangerous position for attacks from satanic, demonic forces. And believe me, they are very real. The scripture talks about it very clearly and uh, says that there's spiritual wickedness in high places, the prince of the power of the air, and all these things. That has to do with words, words that are said, words that come from all different kinds of directions. It is our protection to stay a part of the church and included in the body of Christ. And one other thing I realized, and actually I just realized this recently while teaching my class, that um, when we pull ourselves away from the body, it's like saying, I have no need of you. Yeah. If we say to the hand, I have no need of you, or to the eye, I have no need of you, that's what we're saying when we pull away from the church, from the body of Christ. Amen. You know, I, I kind of hear somebody thinking whenever well, we talk about that, that, that there's really no place that's feeding me or no place that's... Um, but you know, the, actually... Uh, the Word is something that we should individually stay in uh, the Word uh, for ourselves. But at the same time, sometimes God will send you to a place just to put a demand uh, on that, that ministry or that place uh, to, when I say demand, when a, a need for them to speak in a higher level. Uh, one thing that happens is the reason people don't grow in the Lord and don't get edified in church uh, is that... Uh, if you read Ephesians, the fourth chapter, and the, I think it'll like the 11th verse, you'll find out that the, the, the body of Christ only matures as those five giftings, uh, ascension gift ministries, uh, function together. And a lot of times we, we, we've come through a long stretch of time uh, where we've had uh, what we call one man shows or one woman shows is that there's been one personality up front. Uh, you know, but it's not about personality. It's about uh, it's about those that have the heart of God, the heart of the shepherd. Uh, we've also seen times whenever there's a lot of people that are just out for the show instead of out to minister the word of God. Uh, but there are things available. This program we we try to do at least two uh, two programs a week. We didn't do this past Sunday because we were just getting uh, out of we we had a twelve o'clock uh, meeting and. And all, but then on Monday nights we open up our Bible school classes to you. Uh, we've got two more of those, and then uh, uh, our our part of that will be over uh, for this session. Uh, but we try our best to come. Uh, we're going to have to adjust probably the Sunday uh, as God opens more and more doors on Sunday. We're probably going to have to adjust that to another day. But uh, in in my heart, I would like to be able, and that's why we're working on our equipment and stuff. Uh, we'd like to be able to do uh, a five-day-a-week uh, program, uh, but but we'll see what God does with that. Uh, we could do it on YouTube really easy, but Facebook Live is a little bit different because we have to be sitting in front of the um, camera right now until we learn how to 
do it uh, pre-recorded, but, but there's something good about being live too that I get to see your comments and your prayers and, and all. So that strengthens us to do that. So let's go into uh, Ephesians, the first chapter. Um, begin with, we'll, we'll read with the first verse. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful. I want you to get this. To the faithful in Christ Jesus. When I started to skip the first verse, but then I read, it said to the faithful. I hope that's talking about you. I, I, I felt uh, something uh, uh, witness to me when I read that. To the faithful in Christ Jesus. Not just to those in Ephesus right then, but those that are faithful in Christ Jesus. And that's talking about you. Amen. You're here on this program today. Some of you are faithful every time we come on and you're faithful to come for the Word. Um, amen. We realize we're not the only ministry in the world and we realize you could be doing other things. Uh, but you're here listening to the Word of God uh, and, and God will send you the places, put you in the places where uh, you need to hear those things to keep you growing in the Lord. But see, he's speaking of the faithful in Christ Jesus. Uh, verse 2 says, Grace be unto you and peace... I want you to watch this. Grace and peace. They go together. Grace and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God of our Father uh, and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us. Somebody say have. He has yeah. blessed us. It's something that's already done uh, that we have the right to as believers to take hold of now. He says, uh, who, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. There it is, the spiritual again. Uh, because remember I said, the attack is toward your spirit. He wants to take your blessing. Uh, there's a scripture that says, uh, uh, I forget exactly how it goes, but it's something to effect if, uh, if you catch the thief, or if, if, if he can't steal your blessing, he can't keep your goods. So uh, then here we are, uh, as the body of Christ, uh, said, Blessed be the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Say that. In heavenly places. Heavenly places. Now, uh, that reminds me of something. Uh, he's blessed us in heavenly places. And there's a place that He wants us to dwell in. And to find that place, we have to go all the way back to Psalm 91, uh, which says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now, uh, <laughs> amen. Uh, in heaven, what, what's that? A heavenly place. Uh, the heavenly places are those secret places that's reserved for you and me. Uh, in, in Psalm 91, uh, the, not, not preaching on Psalm 91 today, but, but, but he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. There's something about dwelling in those secret places uh, uh, where God is prepared for us. You say, well, I, uh, right now Cheryl and I dwell in Cedartown, Georgia. I'm going to tell you the address because some of my, anyhow, uh, <laughs> but we dwell in Cedartown, Georgia. Uh, we dwell in a house on, uh, out in the country. Uh, you know, but that's our physical location. Sometimes uh, you, your physical location does not really speak of where you're dwelling in the Spirit. Uh, so let's dwell in that secret place. Let's dwell in those secret places of the Most High, like Psalm 91 said. According as He hath chosen us. Watch this. According as He hath chosen us. Say that. He chose me. He chose me. He has chosen me. According as He has chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Now this word, He chose us when? When did He choose us? Before the foundation of the world. Now there's two words. Let me clarify this because I always get somebody back coming back in at me saying it's not talking about before uh, the foundation of the... But there's two words that's translated world and one of them means age uh, and the other means uh, cosmos or the... the, the the orderly arrangement of what God created when He spoke of the worlds into existence. And this particular word is talking about cosmos. It's not talking about the beginning of this age or the age uh, of grace. It's talking about before the world began, before, uh, before He even put uh, anything on this earth, before the earth was even created, uh, God had a plan. Uh, so uh, before the foundation world that we should be holy 
and without blame before Him in love. Now, if it's God's plan for us to be holy and without blame, uh, he, and He came, uh, Jesus Christ came, hung on the cross, took our sins that we might be the righteousness of God. Can I tell you, I believe His plan uh, is come to pass, see? Uh, so, before Him in love. Now, let me tell you something. Uh, many people I come today, even people in the church, don't feel the love of God. They don't because they're looking to people instead of God. Now, now people, we should be uh, we should be those that are that are giving the love of God, that are are manifesting the love of God. But can I tell you, don't somebody's going to let you down. Somebody already has let you down. I just uh, you know somebody already has let you down. But can I tell you, I want to ask you now. Uh, just focus on the love of God. Has God ever let you down? No, He hasn't. Now, you might think, well, I prayed and it had come to pass. Well, that, that doesn't mean He's let you down. Um, but before Him in love, the love of God. In fact, God is love. Did you know that? God is love. It's impossible for Him to be anything but love. So we need to begin to view God as love, begin to understand who He is in love, and then that nature of love begins to work not only to us, but then it will work through us. You got something? All right, now, <clears throat> verse 5 says, having predestinated us to the adoption of children. Now, the word children here, uh, in some places, is <clears throat> translated children. In other places, is translated uh, sons. I like to use son here, uh, to the adoption of sons. Uh, and I like to use the sons because it uh, uh, speaks of a of more maturity, of, of a growing up. Uh, you know, yes, we were born immature into the kingdom of God, uh, born of the Spirit in, into the kingdom of God, uh, immature. But then uh, God, it's God's purpose and God's will to bring many sons unto glory. There's a maturing now. Uh, children by Jesus Christ... Uh, unto himself, according uh, to his good, uh, to the good pleasure of his will. See, it's his will. Uh, it's to his good pleasure. And can I tell you, whenever, uh, well, there used to be a saying, uh, whenever we were talking about uh, the family structure, if mama ain't happy, nobody's happy. Well, I'm going to tell you, when, 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 when Father God's happy, whenever Jesus is happy, uh, can I tell you, his joy unspeakable, Peter said, and full of glory begins to be manifest in us. So we need to realize now, we need to understand uh, that as we, the body of Christ, have this relationship with Him, uh, we have that we are adopted, we have come into the family of God. Uh, amen. Even, if, even when we felt like we were far off, God's uh, brought us into the family of God, and now we are bone of His bone, flesh of His flesh. All right. Uh, to the praise of the glory of His grace. I like that. Glory of His grace. There's glory in the grace of God. Whenever we, we begin to look at the grace of God, He had glory when you accepted His grace. It doesn't matter. Uh, let me share just something with you uh, real quickly. There was somebody I was talking to. They were in the hospital. They had a, uh, had a very bad experience and, and actually uh, they were in the hospital and they said to me uh, that uh, well it's too late for me to be the Virgin Mary you know and, and, and as I was uh, talking and witnessing and, and I began to speak to her and uh, uh, the Lord brought up in my spirit uh, that uh, there were two Marys uh, there were more, more than two but the, the, the two particular ones there was another Mary there called Mary Magdalene out of whom he cast seven devils uh, she was a prostitute. She was uh, her lifestyle was. But can I tell you, Jesus loved her too. So it was God's glory uh, to the glory of His grace. What's the glory of His grace? When we accept His grace, we accept His forgiveness, and now it's no longer us that lives, but it's Christ that lives within us. That old man is dead, and now we begin to walk out the grace of God. Uh, knowing, hallelujah, that He loves us just as much uh, as that second Mary, as that Mary Magdalene, as He did the, uh, His own mother, who was the uh, the Virgin Mary. 
Amen. Wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Amen. I, I, I feel that somebody's struggling uh, with, with the, the mindset of acceptance. Quit looking to man for acceptance now because he's already accepted you through his grace and his mercy and brought you into the family of God. So now let's walk in that grace. There's, there's something happens when we begin to walk in that grace. Uh, in fact, if you haven't experienced that, if you haven't called on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, to be your Lord and Savior, uh, the Scripture says if we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, then we're born again. Uh, and see, guess what? Let's, <laughs> amen. Let, let's give God some glory right now by just accepting His grace. The grace of God, the mercy of God has kept you to this moment. But now the grace of God wants to take you further uh, in your relationship with God. Amen. I, I feel somebody reaching out right now. Somebody taking a hold and reaching out right now to accept that. Uh, verse 7 says, uh, In whom ye have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin, according to the riches of his grace. Amen. Accept his grace. And can I tell you, uh, hallelujah, uh, there, there is more riches in the grace of God than anything you could ever imagine. All of of, uh, of uh, Solomon's treasures and all of the treasures uh, that's ever been, all of uh, all the, the the billionaires in America. Uh, can I tell you? Don't compare to the riches that God wants to give you just by you accepting the grace of God. You got something? Uh, wherein uh, verse eight says, "Wherein He hath abounded toward us in all wisdom." The, in that grace, He's abounding toward us. He's, it's His pleasure uh, now to, uh, for us to have this. Verse 9 says, Having made known unto us the mystery of His will according to His good pleasure, which He hath purposed in Himself. Now Luke, uh, Luke the 12th chapter in the 32nd verse says it's the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom of God. Now what is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace. That's Romans the 14th chapter and 17th verse says of the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Now, not in, you know that's a gift He wants to give you without price. Without He's already paid the price. See now the righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost uh, is what he, is His good pleasure to give you. Uh, that in the dispensation, well, let me back up, uh, uh, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself. Now, he purposed in himself to give us the kingdom of God. He purposed in himself that his kingdom be manifest. In fact, he, Jesus himself said, the kingdom of God is within you. So now, uh, take what's already in you, what's already been deposited, and let that rich flow of who He is begin to minister and reach out and flow into uh, the, the lives of those around you right now. Amen. That in the dispensation of the fullness, and this, the word times here is plural. Uh, you got anything on that? Uh, the word times here is, is plural. So it's more than one season. It's more than one. Uh, I don't like the word use the word dispensation, but but it's more than one dispensation, more than one uh, period of time. But in the fullness of times, he might gather together. There's that word "gather together" again. Uh, that gathering uh, together uh, in one. And the scripture says, "The Lord our God is one." Actually, they added the word God there, but uh, it says the Lord our God is one. So where are we gathered together? We're gathered together in God, in the one, uh, all things in Christ, both which are in heaven, which are on earth, in Him. Now, so that gathering together, uh, there's something about that gathering together I want to just really emphasize uh, because uh, we've had uh, months now where it seems like circumstance. It seems like uh, all this stuff uh, has tried to uh, separate us and keep us from coming into the uh, places where we could worship together, where we could be together. Uh, and can I tell you, uh, we get the 
there was a song Elvis Presley wrote, Suspicious Minds, that just came to my mind. And, you know, whenever we're, we're apart, sometimes the enemy tries to bring suspicious minds and things that, uh, that, that we uh, don't uh, understand. He, he said that about his marriage there. But, but you know, uh, we begin to doubt God. We begin to doubt one another. There's things that begin to happen. But, but see, there's a gathering together unto Him that brings us into a oneness, into a unity uh, with Christ. Uh, by which are, both which are in heaven and which are uh, on earth, even in Him. Somebody say in Him. Thank God we are in Him. In Him we live. In Him we move. In Him we have our being. And whenever whenever we come together in Him, there's something begins to happen with our strength, our power, our anointing. We're together right now. I feel it. I feel your prayers and I feel your agreement uh, in this program today because, and I want you to feel ours. Cheryl and I are here to strengthen you. We're here to agree with you uh, and, that, and, and to believe God with you that whatever your need is, but we want you to go beyond just your need uh, and, and we want you to go to that place of victory where you're walking with uplifted hands, uh, a, a, a high hand, uh, because God has given you the victory. Verse 12 says that we should be to the praise of His glory who first trusted in Christ. Glory to God. Our first trust, our first, our primary uh, our primary posture toward God is our trust. It's so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take Him at His word. Come on, will you trust Him today? There's, there's glory there. There's something uh, happening. God will fill your life, your your. Uh, wherever you are with the glory of God, if you just simply trust Him. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth. See, there's in, it's important that we hear the word of truth, uh, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. There's something happened uh, whenever you believed, whenever you truly believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, whenever the word of your salvation came, there was a seal, there's something, the Holy Spirit began to do something uh, permanent in you. So let's trust in God. That means uh, now I'm permanently uh, a victor in Christ. And I can, uh, yes, I might fall down, but I get back up. Why? Because uh, that there's a seal and the Holy Spirit is there. Uh, glory to God to pick us back up. Verse 14, and we'll close with this. Uh, which in the in the which is the earnest of our inheritance? It's a promise. It's an earn, He's already given us uh, an earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, under the praise of His glory. Now let me just say this: God, what God has done in our spirit, He filled us with the Holy Ghost. He gave us an earnest of the promised possession of that that is to come. Uh, that is to be that yet to be manifested. I believe there's uh, a scripture that says the last enemy to be put under our feet uh, is death. Uh, yeah, death is all around us, but we don't live in the fear of death. We live in the power of the Spirit, and we live under the glory of God. We have an earnest saying unto us that there's a greater inheritance to be manifested in us. Amen. Are you through? I'm done. No. <laughs> Amen. Uh, so today, uh, just to recap, just a moment. It's our gathering together unto Him. It's our, our God drawing us together that we come together in Him. And as we come together in Him, Paul said, in Him we live and move and have our being. And see, that's where God wants us to be, in Him today. Uh, so I want to encourage you. I just want to encourage you today to uh, to be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the power of His might. I want to encourage you uh, to live in that secret place of the Most High. Uh, those places that are secret, those places uh, that, that God has prepared only for those uh, that will trust Him, only for those that will believe Him. Uh, uh, take advantage of your inheritance uh, in Christ Jesus. He, he, he died, He was buried, He raised, rose again on the third day to make sure you could be, uh, that, that you could receive everything He has. 
Amen. Let's pray, Cheryl, before we go off today. And uh, I just realized we are going way over um, at a time when I've got an appointment right now. Uh, uh, so we've got to, uh, we we're just believing God. It's been our privilege to be with you today. And we ask you, uh, if you can, share an offering with us to help us continue to, to advance in our ministry and in those things we're preparing for 2021 already and getting ready uh hope for the mission fields open back up and we're praying that god will just do uh, mighty things we are reaching out uh so uh p.o box 1007 cedar town georgia 30125 roger hutchins ministries uh we are a 501c3 uh organization under capstone ministries incorporated and uh we believe that god will uh, bless you for being a blessing to the ministry and we appreciate you coming today father in the name of jesus right now we thank you lord for those that have listened to this broadcast we thank you god for those that you have drawn together uh, lord i feel our spirits knit i feel i feel our hearts knit uh, god and as this video continues to go forth on on youtube it continues to go forth on twitter and on on the other uh, venues that it will be on god that it just touched the hearts and lives of the people and god i thank you lord for who you are and what you're doing uh, in this earth today. God, heal. Father, I thank you, Lord. I just felt a healing, a quickening today. Father, in the name of Jesus, somebody physically needs a touch from God right now. And whatever it is, God, whatever they're going through, I thank you, God, that you bring healing to their physical body. You bring peace to their mind. And God, you bring forth power through their spirit. And God, we give you thanks and praise for it. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. And we appreciate you tuning in today. And we'll see you next time. Watch our Facebook page and it'll uh, tell you when we're on again.